G'day, I'm James, and here's a curious Pythagorean puzzler. It goes as follows. I've got the numbers 1 through 24 written on the board in a sort of semi-random fashion. All right, doesn't matter, I just want the numbers 1 through 24 on the board. And here's the game I'm going to play. I'm going to choose two numbers. I'll choose two nice ones to begin with. I'll choose, say, 3 and 4, 3 and 4. I'm going to write them as the legs of a right triangle, 3 and 4. So 3 and 4, those two chosen. And then I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to compute what the hypotenuse has to be. Okay, classic, has to be 5 in this case. And I'm going to erase the two numbers I chose, 3 and 4, and replace them with the hypotenuse, 5. Okay, and I'm going to do it again. I'll choose two numbers on the board. Okay, uh, I'll be nice to myself again. I'll choose 5 and third, uh, no, five and 12. It'll be nice that way. Use them as the legs of a right triangle. Because when I do that, classic example, hypotenuse has to be 13 in that case. So I'll take the 5 and 12 away that I used and replace them with the number 13. And I keep doing that over and over again, but I don't have to be nice. I can choose two awkward numbers like, I don't know, 10 and uh, 7. 10 and 7, in which case this would be by Pythagorean theorem square root 149. Ugh, I'm out of the integers, but I'll erase 10 and 7 and replace them with the square root, one, square root of 149. I'm going to do that over and over and over again. In fact, you can see, Every time I choose two numbers and replace them with one number, so the count of numbers on the board is going down every single time. So eventually I'm going to end up with one single number. And then I'm going to invite you to do it again. Just choose numbers at random this time, get to a single number. Then I invite you to do it again. Just choose random numbers in a totally different order and do it again and get a single number. And here's the shocking thing. Because that number you get at the end, I bet, is always going to be the same number. Whoa. So my question is twofold. What is that same one number you're sure to get every single time? And why are you sure to get it every single time? Why is this in, in, in independent of the choices you make along the way? Why are you guaranteed of a particular number at the end? So what is that number and why must it be that number? Okay, I'm back and we give it away. Did you figure out that 70 is going to be a universal fact in this game? Start with 24 num numbers, 1 through 24 on the board. You're going to end up with the number 70 in playing this game. No matter what choice you make along the way, you are stuck with the number 70. It's inescapable. So the real question is, why? Why 70? Where's that coming from? Well, so let's think about it. So we're playing the game. We've got some numbers left on the board. Let's do abstract numbers here right now. And think of how this game works. You pick two numbers, say A and B. Use the hypotenuse as the legs of a, of a right triangle and then work out the hypotenuse. So it'd be a squared plus b squared square root of. a squared plus b squared square root of. So this pair of numbers will be replaced by the square root of a squared plus b squared. So you square the two numbers, add them, take the square root. If I do it over here, later choose c and d. Uh, I'd use, uh, sorry, d and e, d and e. I get the square root of d squared plus e squared. Great. At some point as you play, you might use an old number and a new number. Okay, so what I have to do is square that, square that, and add them. C squared plus D squared plus E squared, and then square root of. C squared plus the square root of this, D squared, E squared, whoops, square root of. As as though I just did the squares of the first three numbers originally, square root of. Ah, and if I start mixing numbers I've done before already, you take this squared plus that squared, square root of. Oh, this squared would be a squared plus b squared, plus this squared is c squared plus d squared plus e squared, then you do the square root of. This is a beautiful, beautiful little sort of a, like pattern in arithmetic that summing the squares and taking the square roots off just gives me like the sum of the squares, the original numbers way back in the list. So if you actually see this pattern going on, then you say, oh, the final number in this game must be, so I start with the numbers 1 through 24, it must be all those numbers squared, added together, up to 23 squared plus 24 squared, square root of. Wow. And I happen to choose a particularly nice number, 24, because that's a sum of squares up to 24, which itself is a perfect square. I'll be taking the square root of 4,900, which is 70, which is 70. In fact, actually a little bonus here, bonus puzzle, tough puzzle. I happen to choose the only sum of squares, starting at one, going up to some number, and I went to 24, whose sum of squares is itself a perfect square number. There's no other number I could have chosen here to end up with an integer. That is crazy. So as a bonus challenge, can you prove that 24 is the only number such that one square plus two squared, blah, 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 that number squared is guaranteed to be a perfect square? Whoa, is that doable or is that really quite a challenge? It's actually a juicy challenge. 24 is the only number that would have worked to give an integer answer here, but this is kind of cool. Gotta love this little puzzle, kind of mysterious mix of Pythagorean theorem and number theory, and look at that. Grand stuff.